मे कषिपुत्र Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Guru's Guru, my Param Guru Dev, and to Srila Prabhupada, and to all of our Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Prabhupada. And finally, I offer my pranam to all my dear brothers and sisters, and all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who have assembled together. Uh, to join us for this holy discourse. Vancha Kalpatur Vasaka Bas in the webs of Putin and Bhavan and Vaishnavi Bhavan. So you may be aware that last week and the week before we have been hearing from Bhagavad Gita chapter 10, in particular the Chatu Sloki Gita, that is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita presented in four essential verses by Sri Krishna. There Sri Krishna has said, Aham sarva saprabhavo matak sarvam pravatate iti matva bhajanti man buddha bhava saman I am the source of all material and spiritual worlds. Everything is moving. Every detail is going on, uh, being inspired by me. I am the Nimitta Karan, the instrumental cause of each and every activity. And those who know this by hearing from a Sadhguru, transcendental spiritual master in disciplic succession, then they know this very well. What do they do? Buddha Bhava Samanvita. They engage in my devotional service, absorbed in one particular bhav. So, Machita Magata Prana Badayanta Parasparam Katyanta Stamandityanta Shanti Chara Manticha. Their mm, chitta, their internal meditation is fully offered to me. The movement of their pran, their senses, their outer activities are fully offered to me. And they are always engaged in uh, speaking and hearing Harikata 
uh, narrations about my main form qualities and pastimes. And by this, they enlighten each other internally and they experience great satisfaction and great joy. So Krishna said, Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Pratipuravakam Tadami Bhutti Yogam Tam Yena Mahu Priyantiyate. To those who are living this ecstatic devotional lifestyle in the association of saints. Then Krishna said, uh, to those who are always serving me in this way, with priti, that means with bhav, with rati, uh, being fixed in a particular stai bhav, that is a permanent transcendental emotional relationship with Krishna as a friend, as a parent or beloved. Here Krishna is speaking specifically about Raganuga Bhakti, not about Vaidhi Bhakti or the service rendered to God according to relative principles, but rather certainly internally and outwardly inspired by an intense greed to um, be filled with the sweet barbs of Krishna's eternal associates who are already serving him there in his Nityalila. So for such persons, then the Dami Bhutti Yogam Tam Yena Mamu Payantiyate, Krishna said, I give them the Bhutti Yoga, I give them the awareness by which they come to me. That means they see me everywhere, they close their eyes and begin to see my Leela in their hearts. And seeing the Leela in the heart, though they're seeing it, but the separation will not go down. Because it's not a direct experience. It is like a, uh, because it is the movement of their own chitta which has now come under the control of Swarup Shakti. Mm. So the, the Atma is not having a direct experience. And so though they are seeing me, though they are seeing my pastimes, but the separation is still miraculously increasing to the point where they cannot tolerate it anymore. And then Prem comes, Yena Mamu Priyantiyate, and they leave this body, they leave their, um, their subtle body also, and they Krishna said they come to me. So, Te Sham Evam Evanu Kampatam Ahama Jnana Jamtama Nasha Bhavastu Jnana Deepa Navashvata. To show them special mercy, Krishna said, I, residing in the core of their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge, all the darkness of ignorance. So these four verses comprise the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Now, we're coming to verse 12 onwards of Bhagavad Gita. And this is very important because uh, these verses are spoken by Arjun. Arjun is now giving his response to hearing this nectar of Chapter Sloki Gita. Now, those who are um, on paths that don't promote bhakti, they're not on the path of bhakti, They, even when bhakti is ma mentioned, they like to minimize it and try to give other explanations, and which will result in an impersonal conclusion, such as uh, uh, Krishna is uh, really just a sattvic form of Brahman. The, the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, when covered by the Upadi of the Vidya Vritti of Sattva Gun, becomes Ishvara, God. And Arjun represents the Jiva, who is the same Brahman, uh, who is now, um, has superimposed an, upad, an Upadi, a designation of the Vidya Vritti, the ignorance function of Maya, and that is called the Jiva. But ultimately the Jiva is Brahman and God is also Brahman and Brahman, just the oneness is the highest thing. And uh, so somehow or other, uh, those who are attached to the impersonal way of thinking, those who have not yet received a trace of the mercy of the Supreme Lord that comes through Vaishnava association, they always try to twist the words of Krishna. But Krishna is most intelligent, and therefore, in this pastime of speaking Bhagavad Gita, we find that it's not only Krishna speaking, but we 
Um, also here, the response of Arjun. So Arjun is about to explain how he understands Krishna's words. And of course, if he were to say something wrong, then Krishna will would not agree with him. But of course, we'll see that Krishna agrees with him and then uh, continues later in the chapter. So um, we can know now by examining Arjun's words, what is the opinion of a person who hears directly from Krishna, understands Krishna, and it's confirmed by Krishna that he's also understood. And this is what a person says. You could um, compare this to some kind of security system. Uh, when someone has uh, some software or electronic device, they have some uh, security uh, system there uh, to make sure that others cannot tamper with it. So to make sure that the meaning of Gita is fixed and that in the future others, even if they try to tamper with it, and many try to tamper with the meaning of the Gita, but they cannot succeed because the meaning has been fixed now by Arjun's response to Krishna's Chaturslopi Gita. So here it is. It's extraordinarily beautiful. Uh, Arjuna Uvacha Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhava Purusham Shashvatam Dityam Adidevam Ajam Vibhum Ahustam Rishaya Sarve Deva Shir Naradastata Asito Deva Lovyasa Swayam Chaiva Bravishime Arjun is saying Bhavan, O oh, you Krishna, you are. Param Brahma. You are the Supreme Brahma. Param Dhamma. You are the Supreme Dham, the refuge of all existence. Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. You are the Supreme Pure Existence. Purusham. You are a person. You are not impersonal. You are a Purush. Having Shakti. Mm -hmm. Purush means who has prakriti, who has a potency and interacts with his potency. So Purusham, Shashwatam, but you are Shashwat, eternal, Divyam, divine, transcendental, Adi Devam, you are the origin of all the demigods, Ajham, you are the unborn, Vibhum. You are Sarvavyapi, all-pervading and the greatest, um, in, un, unsurpassed. I'm just saying, it is not only you. Because uh, someone may say, well, Krishna is boastful. He, he may be saying so many things about himself. Mm -hmm. But do others agree? So Arjun saying, Ahustam Rishya Sarave, and Hey Krishna, all the great sages, such as Devashi Narad, Narad Muni, Asita, Devala, and Srila Vyasadeva, the compiler of the Vedas, they all say the same conclusion about you that you are Param Brahma, you are Param Dham, Pavitram Paramam Bhavan, Purusham Shashvatam Devyam Ari Deva Majambi book. They all say it. So there's a consensus among all the great rishis. Swayam Chaiva Bharvishime. And now, Krishna, you yourself have described this to me. So, let's examine the meaning of these words one by one. First of all, the word uh, Brahma, Brinhati Brinayati Iti Brahma, means that that which is great and that who makes others great is called Brahma. But the Vedas also say 
Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. So many people think that means that the Jiva is Brahman. But do, that is true in the sense that Brahman is spirit and the living entity is the Shakti of the Supreme Brahman. Uh, Shakti Shakti Mate Abhe. So sometimes the living entity meditates on his qualitative um, similarity to the Supreme Brahman. So there is a, such a statement, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. But the Jiva is never called Param Brahma, the Supreme Brahman. So here Arjuna is saying directly, Aham Brahmasmi, I may be Brahma, but you are Param Brahma. You are the Supreme Brahma. And Param Dham. Now the word Dham is very uh, important. In the Sanskrit Amar Kosh dictionary, the synonyms for the word Dham have been given. So Dham means Griha, home, or uh, abode. Dham means deha, body. Dham means twit. Twit means effulgence or uh, complexion. And prabhav means influence or glory. And dham, of course, means abode, as we commonly use the word dham with holy places like Vrindavan dham, Mayapur dham. So uh, Vrindavan dham is all of these things. It is Vrindavan Dham is the Griha, it's the home of Krishna. Vrindavan Dham is the Deha, the body of Krishna. It's non different from Krishna's body. In fact, see, Krishna said, the Jamuna River is my Shashumna Nadi. Hmm. So Vrindavan is the Twit. Twit is the, is the complexion, the effulgence uh, of see, Krishna. Paranandam Jyoti Param Apitadaswa Dhyam Apicha. As Lord Brahma has said, that this um, Braja Dham, Galoka Brindavan Dham, it is the Pram Jyoti, it is the light emanating from the form of Sri Krishna. So it is his Prabhat, Krishna's glory. So here Arjuna is saying all of these things. You are, O oh Krishna, you are the Supreme Absolute Truth. You are the Param Dham, you are the Supreme Abode. And you are the shelter, uh, the abode of all living beings. And Pavitram Paramam Bhavan, you are the supreme Pavitra, supremely pure. Here, the implication is that it is not that Paramatma is the supreme Dham or the supreme Brahma, but Krishna, the two handed form of Shama Sundar the human-like, sweet form of Krishna who is interacting very lovingly, controlled by the love of his devotees, that very form is the absolute truth. So, Pavitram Paramam Bhavan, you are the supreme true, true uh, pure, indicates that if a person realizes the beautiful human-like form of Sri Krishna, then they become completely purified. They are now fully, fully transcendental. Uh, so, Purusham, see Krishna is the Purush. So as we mentioned before, Purush means a person. So a person is, is one who has, a Purush is one who has Shakti. So Krishna has his uh, Shaktis. His Shaktis are uh, can be considered in three ways. Mm, that is that first, Ekameva Paramam Tattvam Sobhavika Chinti Shaktiya That Krishna has one Shakti, but that Shakti is acting in different ways and takes nomen nomenclature according to the activity, the Kriya, which that Shakti is doing. So Krishna Shakti can be understood in terms of three Vaibhavs, three Prabhavs and three Anubhavs. So the three Vaibhavs, that means, Vaibhav means distinct uh, aspects of Krishna's energy, are 
the antaranga shakti the internal spiritual energy or swarup shakti the bahiranga shakti that is maya the external material energy and the tatasta shakti the jiva the living entity who according to his inclination if he has the enjoying spirit and is indifferent to the service of the supreme lord he comes under the control of the external energy and if he turns his attention and becomes attentive and uh, very much desirous of pleasing sri krishna then he uh, becomes transferred to the swarup shakti to the internal abode and goes to the transcendental abode so these three the maya shakti the swarup shakti and the jiva shakti who can go in either direction these are the three uh, vibhavs of krishna's one shakti now the three prabhavs the three prabhavs are jnana icha and kriya uh, first of all a, a person must be conscious if you're not conscious you're not a person so here krishna is called purush so being purush he has gyan consciousness and if you are conscious then you can desire something so the ne- the next prabhav is icha shakti desire but if you know something and you desire it but you have no power to fulfill that desire then the, the other shaktis are quite useless so the third aspect of krishna's uh, prabhav uh, that is called kriya shakti the power of activity the power of action so krishna's shaktis prabhav is divided into jnana icha and kriya and then krishna shakti has three anubhavs anubhav means the that by which one experiences the various transcendental emotions and they are the sandini samvit and radini the existence potency the um consciousness potency and radini the uh, joy potency when samvit and radini they are uh, combined together that makes bhakti shakti love and that love krishna has for his devotees and that shakti goes into the hearts of his devotees and they serve krishna and they experience that love and they give happiness to sri krishna so krishna can only feel ananda joy by the service of a person who himself is uh, imbued with that ananda shakti that ladini shakti so these are all the implications of the word purush purusham shashvatam shashvatam means eternal and divyam transcendental sometimes in bhagavad gita the jiva the individual soul is also called purush but here krishna is saying adideva ajam you are unborn whereas the condition souls they are different from their bodies so krishna's transcendental body and krishna self there is no difference they had dehi vibhago yam nashray vidyate kochit in the kurma purana it is said there is no difference at all between the body of the supreme lord and the self the soul of the supreme lord He is fully transcendental mm-hmm. So Shashvatam Divya Div Div Dhatu indicates Parama Sundar that Krishna is divine in the sense of supremely beautiful and Div Dhatu also means Kridashiya playful so Krishna is beautiful and he has playful pastimes Adi Devam now someone may say but uh, it's all good but I I would rather worship um durga or kali or uh, mahadev lord shiva or ganesh whatever i think that they are supreme lord or all of the demigods are on equal level so you can worship any of them so here arjun is saying adi devam no 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 you are the origin of all the devatas and ajam you are without birth and vibhu what unlimited so 
by this very emphatic verse and also by explaining that all the great rishis and all the great uh, sages such as Narad and Vyas, Asita and Devla, they have given the same opinion. There is a consensus upon this. It is not a matter of controversy. Arjun is uh, putting the security on Bhagavad Gita that no one can uh, tamper with the actual true conclusion. Bhagavad Gita as it is. So, now, a person may say, Arjun, you have said that Vyasadev and Narad and other sages say the same things about Krishna. When did they say these things? So in reply, we can say that Vyasadev has uh, written in the Kata Upanishad that Gyatva Devam Muchate Sarvapapai when the jiva knows the Supreme Lord, who is completely pure, the jiva himself becomes pure. So here's an example of Pavitram Parabam Bhavam, this praise to Arjun, when um, Vyasadev himself has uh, written the same thing in the uh, Kata Upanishad. Sorry, in the Suetashvata Upanishad. Suetashvata Upanishad. Also, is Krishna Parabrahma? Yes, in the Taitariya Upanishad, there Srila Vyasadeva said, Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma, that Brahma is the uh, Satyam, the truth. Jnanam is the embodiment of all knowledge, and that knowledge is Anantam, unlimited. So the living entity cannot be that Brahma. Because the living entity's knowledge is limited. Those who are in uh, Maya, their knowledge is limited. So this description does not refer to them. Also, in the Kata Upanishad, it is said, Tasmin e vasvitaha sarvei tadu natti kastana. All beings take shelter in him alone, and nothing can surpass him. In the Briyad Aranyaku Upanishad, Vyasadeva has written, Sarvam Patmanam Tarati Nainam Patmam Tarati. The Supreme Lord surpasses all pap, all sins, and sin does not overcome him. So, uh, though Arjun is saying Vyasadeva also supports this, and we are giving evidence from the Upanishads, from the original Vedas, which are compiled by Vyasadeva. We can also say that this Bhagavad Gita is actually coming uh, in the Mahabharata, and the Mahabharata was given by Vyas also. So there's no question, Vyas must agree with all of these conclusions. Because it's Srila Vyasadeva who, is, um, uh, uh, given, who has given in the Mahabharata these very conclusions. So in the Gopal Tupani Upanishad, it is. It is said, Tasmat Krishna Eva Paro Devas Tam Dayet Tam Raset Tam Bajet Tam Yajet. So in the Gopal Tupani Upanishad, Vyasadeva is explaining Krishna is the Lord beyond all the three material modes of nature. Tam Dayet, one should meditate upon him. Tam Raset, one should relish the rasa of uh, loving service to him. Tam Bajet, one should engage in his service, tam yajat, and one should worship him. So, in this way, uh, all the conclusions which are confirmed by Arjun, they are confirmed by the other rishis, and so Arjun is also making reference to them to convince the public. We should see by the context also that Arjun is right in front of Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna has already said, to those who are always serving me with love, I give them the intelligence by which they come to me. And so there's no question that about Arjun's qualification. Arjun himself is always serving Krishna with so much love that though Krishna is a prince in Dwarka, and more than that, ontologically, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but he has taken the low position of being Arjun's chariot driver, 
because the heart of Krishna has been conquered by Arjun. So, um, Krishna is, there's no doubt that when Krishna is speaking this to him, then Arjun is being by Krishna's mercy uh, fully enlightened in all tattvas, uh, in all realization, and giving the perfect conclusion here. So, now, Arjun will say, Sarvam Meta Dritam Manye, text 14. Sarvam Meta Dritam Manye, Yang Mal Vadasi Keshava, Nahite Bhagavan Vyaktim, Vidhu Deva Naganavaha. Sarvam Itam Ritam Manye, O Keshava. Krishna, O oh, Keshav, I accept as true, Rita, everything that you have said to me. So here Arjun is showing us in what way we should accept the statements of Gita. Generally a person, they read Gita and they are full of doubts. Is Krishna true or not true? Is Krishna real or not real? Is this a fiction? Is this a, um, the imagination of Vyasadeva or another author pretending to be Vyasadeva? What is this? And they relativize the Bhagavad Gita. There are so many books on the shelf. And among those different books written by fallible conditioned souls with the defects of uh, inattentiveness, um, being under illusion, uh, being... Uh, subject to various bias due to their own um, agendas and with limited senses. In this way, um, Brahma, Brahmada, mm -hmm. Vipralipa, Sakarna, Patav, four types of defects are present in the conditioned souls and they've written so many books and these books are just Maya, basically, except uh, uh, the, only those uh, texts which are composed by liberated souls who are enlightened, uh, they are not touched by Maya. So all the other books, full of Maya, they cannot help one. They make one become more bound in illusion, actually. So, but among those books on the shelf, one of them is Bhagavad Gita. So many persons, they all think Gita is in the same category. But Bhagavad Gita is spoken directly by the all-powerful all-knowing Supreme Personality of Godhead. Previously in chapter 4, Krishna said, I have spoken this mm, teaching of yoga to Vivaswa and the Son, and he has spoken it to Manu, and he has spoken to Ishvaku and so on, and it's coming now. Now Krishna and Arjun, they're the same age mm, at the time of this uh, Last time of Krishna speaking Bhagavad Gita, Yudhisthira Maharaj was 60 years old when he was uh, crowned after the battlefield. His coronation ceremony took place and he became the emperor of the world. So this is just shortly before uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj is 60 years old. Arjun and Krishna are the same age and they're about four years younger than uh, Yudhisthira Maharaj. So both of them are about 56. So obviously when Arjun heard this, uh, that Krishna has instructed the sun god millions of years ago. Then Arjun posed the question, uh, but the sun god is senior by birth to you, how is it that you instructed him? Then Krishna said, hey Arjun, many births both you and I have had, but I remember all of them and you do not. So that means that see Krishna appears in this world once in every day of Lord Brahma. 360 days of his year, 100 years of his life, and millions and millions of Brahmins with no beginning, Krishna has come to this world. And he spoke in this Bhagavad Gita again and again so many times. Mm -hmm. So, and he remembers everything. So how deep is his consciousness? <laughs> no one can, his vibhu, vibhu, Arjuna is saying. It's unfathomable. So when such a person speaks, then we should take that as being completely true. We cannot. It is a great offense. Uh, that is a, 
Shruti Shastra Nindanam, to consider the Vedic literature to be on the same level as the literatures composed by conditioned souls, which are the products of Maya, which are the products of Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, then this is an offense to the Holy Name, actually, to minimize the Vedic literatures. So when Supreme Lord speaks, then we should listen. And if we listen, there can be no mistake. There can be no mistake. Mistake is the tendency of the conditioned souls. Following their own intelligence, everything they do and say is a mistake. But if a person, even if they're not so intelligent or experienced or whatever, if they all follow the message of Sri Krishna coming in Sri Guru Parampara, in the tradition from Sri Krishna himself, then this can never be a mistake. Their life is not a mistake. They will, in this life, they can realize Supreme Lord. And at the end of this life, go to Goloka Vrindavan. And anything you do other than that is a mistake. So Arjuna is saying, Sarvam me tadritam manye yanman si keshava. I accept it's true all that you have told me, Keshava. O oh Lord, even the Devas and Dhanavas do not know your Vyaktim. Here Vyaktim means they don't know your form. It can also mean, even if they accept your form, Vyaktim means manifest, so it can also mean they cannot understand your pastime of being born in this world like a human being, though you are unborn, though you are not a human being. So, here, as always in Bhagavad Gita, when Sri Krishna uses a name for Arjun, he's got many affectionate names for Arjun, like um, Parta or uh, Kaunti, Kaunteya or uh, Dhananjay or uh, Parantapa or Gudakesh. So we find there are many names for uh, Arjun affectionate names that Krishna uses in Bhagavad Gita. And similarly, there are many names for Krishna that Arjun uses, such as uh, Govinda. Or here we have uh, Keshava. And each time they use a name for each other, that name has a very profound significance. Uh, it's either emphasizing the sedanta which is being expressed in the verse, or it's expressing some special loving sentiment. So here, there is a, here the sedanta is being supported, because one of the meanings, the Aishwarya gut meanings, because Keshava has sweet meanings as well, even in relation to the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis and with Shimati Radhika. Um, those are Madhurya Gat meanings. But in Aishwarya Gat meanings, then Ka means Brahma. And Isha means Shiva. And Va means one who binds. So Keshava means, O oh Krishna, you are the controller even of great demigods, the highest devatas such as Brahma and Shiva. And therefore, the word Keshava is supporting um, the last line, Vidur Deva Nadanava. So, therefore, it's not a surprise that if you are the controller of even the highest demigods like Brahma and Shiva, it's not a surprise that the lesser devatas like Indra, uh, Surya, Chandra, and so on, and, and the Danavas and the demons as well, that they cannot understand the mystery of your appearance in this world. So then, now we're coming to verse 15. Each verse gets progressively more ecstatic. So now, Arjun is saying, Swayam me vatmanat manam Vita tvam purushottama Bhuta bhavana bhuteshu Deva deva jagatpate <clears> oh <throat> Purushottam, there are three Purushas who are involved in the manifestation of the world. That is, 
The Maha Vishnu, Gavadakasya Vishnu, and Kiridakasya Vishnu. They are called famous as the three Purushas. But you are Purushottam. You are superior even to the, your own uh, three expansions by which you manifest the world. So, O Supreme among the creators. Mm -hmm. You are Bhuta Bhavana. You are the source of all the um, elements of the world and you are the source of all the Bhuta, Bhuta means elements, but it can mean living entities as well. You are the source of all the living entities. Mm -hmm. So one may be a father, but he may not be, be able to control his children. So not only Bhuta Bhavana, you are like the father of all the living entities, but you are Bhutesha, you are the controller of all the living entities. So Mm -hmm. One may be a controller, but is he really worshipable? So then Arjuna says, Deva, Deva, you are the Deva of the Devas. That means of all those who are worshipable, you are the most worshipable. And Jagatpate, you are Jagatpati. Mm -hmm. You are the, the, the master. You are Pati, means one who does the Palan the uh, protection of uh, all the living entities. Of course, Patikin uh, also indicates uh, a husband as well. So there, there are different moods in there. It can be taken in an Aishwarya way or a sweet way also. Now, what is very fascinating about this verse is Purushottama Bhuta Bhavana, Bhushe, Bhutesha, Deva Deva, and Jagatpate. There are five names for Krishna, and they are all uh, in the vocative case. In other words, the Arjun is calling out to Krishna and glorifying him by these names, and he's saying, Swayam Evatmanatmanam, Veta Twam. Veta Tuam means, Veta means no, Tuam means you. So, Tuam Veta, you know, Swayam, yourself. Hmm? Manam, you, you know your Atma, only you yourself know your Atma by your Atma. So, the general meaning is, only you alone know yourself by yourself. So, that means that, see, Krishna is aware of himself by the power of his own Sambit Shakti. He experiences transcendental emotions by his own internal potency. And who can know the heart of Krishna? Na yasya ka yichit rajan puman veda viditsitam. When Bishmadev was lying on his bed of arrows about to leave this world, he says, Oh my Lord, no one can uh, know your intentions or understand your heart. When Krishna is here in this world performing his pastimes, we uh, know what will happen next, what will happen next, because we've read them all. But those who are in the pastimes, they have no idea what will happen next. See, Krishna went as um, a diplomat representing the, the Pandavas and he went to the court, the royal court of the Kauravas to negotiate a peace deal and it was rejected. Now Krishna, he didn't want peace. He wanted there to be a battle and he wanted the Kauravas to be wiped out. He wanted to remove the burden of the earth through his heroic associates, the Pandavas. But if you were there looking at Krishna at the time, you say, oh, Krishna is going on a mission to negotiate peace. He wants peace. Actually, he had no intention of peace. So, Vishwadev says, when a great learned person even inquires and investigates, what is Krishna up to? What's his intention? They become bewildered. They become um, completely confused, even by the act of investigating, just asking the question. So Krishna is very inscrutable. He's most inscrutable. And so who can know the heart of Krishna? 
Mm-hmm. So, Krishna can be understood to a certain degree by seeing his anubhavs. In other words, the way he's behaving, these are anubhavs, their reactions to the love he's feeling in his heart for his devotee. So we can know something about Krishna's love for his devotees by his actions. But to ascertain his root intentions, what he will do, who can know it? So here Arjuna is saying, Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency, by your Swarup Shakti, especially Samvit. The Samvit Vritti, the uh, cognizance portion of your internal potency. This is general meaning. Mm-hmm. So then let's go a little bit uh, deeper into that. Only you yourself know yourself by your internal potency. So who is the internal potency, the Atma of Krishna? Again and again, when you see this word Atma in in Srimad Bhagavatam or in other Shastras, it uh, often means Radhika. Sarva Vedanta Saram Yad Brahmatmai Katva Lakshanam. Mm. And what is it? Vastva Dhritiyam Nishtam Kaival Yaika Prayojanam. At the end of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, pure love Kaivalya. That means Kaivala Prain. That is the exclusive Prayojan, the goal of this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the essence of all Vedanta. And the essence of all Vedanta is characterized. Brahmatma Ikattu Atvam Lakchanam means by the oneness of Brahma and Atma. Here Brahma means Krishna, Atma means Radharani. So, Vastva Dhriti Amnistam, they are the non-dual absolute truth, and Nishta, a love for them, is the topmost goal. Kaival Yaika Prayojanam, the highest goal of the stream and Bhagavatam. So, uh, in the Vriyat um, Gautamiya Tantra, there is a Dikrinte Swatmanam, if someone will offer uh, some water, especially water from their eyes, tears, with a tulsi leaf to see Krishna, then Krishna sells his atma to that person. Mm-hmm. Or it can mean that uh, Radharani herself comes to that person. So, the word atma can, means Krishna's internal potency and the fullest Radha Purna Shakti. Mm-hmm. Krishna Purna Shakti Man, Duivastu Vedna Shastra Praman. Radharani is the full Shakti, or the Atma Maya, internal potency of Sri Krishna. So here, Swayame Vatmanam Vita Tvam Purushottama, the Rasik Vaishnavas will take it. Oh Krishna, only Radharani knows you. Others don't know. Mm. That is that if Krishna is with his friends, he looks very beautiful. If Krishna is in the lap of Mother Shoda, he looks more beautiful. But if Krishna is with gopis, he looks more beautiful. But if see, Krishna is alone with Radharani, then he looks most beautiful. And Radhika herself sees him and knows his heart. Once Radharani said, Hey Sham Sundar, I think that a heroine, the female can know the heart of her lover, but the male, the hero, cannot understand the heart of his heroine. Krishna said, yes, what you have said is absolutely true about every hero except for me. I know your heart. Radharani said, oh, you are a liar. I don't believe you. Krishna said, one day I will show you. The meaning is this, that Although only Radharani knows the heart of Krishna, but also see Krishna in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he takes full shelter of the Bhav of Radharani and then he realizes his Atma. He comes to know his Atma Radharani and then in the in Radha Bhav, in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes to know his, himself, his own beauty that even he could not realize in Krishna Lila. 
So here, Swamiva Manatmanam Vedatvam, O Krishna, only you know yourself by your own internal policy. First meaning, Krishna is aware of himself by his Sambit Shakti, he's aware of his own inscrutable intentions. Next meaning, He's aware, he becomes aware of himself, his self, his Atma, his Radharani. By relishing uh, Radhabhav, he becomes aware of her moods. And also by the Leela of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being situated in Radhabhav, he comes to know his own beauty that only Radhika could relish through her love. So in this way, three meanings. Swami Vatmanatmanam Vaitatvam Purashottama. So we cannot say that Arjuna is thinking in this way when he speaks these words, but it is such a thing that when a great devotees speak, they may even speak things that have meanings which are even not um, open to them at that time. As Lord Shiva has said, I know Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami knows. Vyasadev may know or not, but he realized it and Vyasadeva was the one who uh, compiled it and had it written down by his secretary Ganesh. Hmm? So how can he not know it? Yes, sometimes a realization words may come that the speaker is realizing to one extent, but another person by Mukta Prakrahavriti, uh, by the logic of the uh, uh, liberated from the limitation of the one's own intelligence. Uh, then it can be understood in another way. We can give an example, just like a cow. If a cow is tied with a rope to a stake which is in the ground, then the cow can eat the grass within a circle whose radius is the length of that rope. But if someone will untie the rope, then the cow can wander off very far away and eat grass in a, in a, in a far off place even. So in the same way, uh, a person may understand Shastra according to their own limited intelligence, according to material intelligence, they may have some idea which is never really, really correct. Mm -hmm. Only real. Theoretical knowledge is not knowledge. Realization is knowledge. Mm -hmm. So a person may understand something according to the, the length or the radius, the limitation of their own buddhi. But when a person becomes liberated and floating in the waves of bhav, then the cow of their uh, intelligence may wander and go and taste the grass on the bank of Yamuna in Vrindavan or on the bank of Radhakund even. So, in this way, the Rasik Vaishnavas, they can interpret according to Mukta Pragrahavriti. So then, in Arjun says in verse 16, Vaktum asi ashe shena divi hatma vibhutaya ya bi vibhuti bi lokan imangs tam vapya tishtati. Hey Krishna, you should speak about your vibhutis, your divine. Transcendental opulences in detail mm. and express in which ways through your vibhutis you are controlling the entire universe. Text 17. Katam vidyam ham yogins tam stada parichintayan keshu keshu chabaveshu chinchu si bhagavan maya. O yogi. When I contemplate you, Krishna, in what manner should I know you and your qualities? In what objects should I think of you while meditating upon you, O my Lord, O Bhagavan? So here, Sri Arjun is calling Krishna Yogi. So is Krishna a Yogi? Many persons practice Yogi, they call Yoga, they call themselves Yogis. So is Krishna a Yogi? No. Here's a special use, uh, grammatical use of the word. For example, Krishna is known as Banamali. So Banamali means one who wears 
a garland of uh, forest flowers, very long garland that reaches down to the feet uh, with some leaves also in it. It's called a banamala. So one who wears banamali is, uh, is is called uh, one who wears a banamala is called banamali. That's the mm, etymology of the word. However, by Rudi Briti, by conventional use, we know that if someone says, "Hey, banamali," they're not referring to any person. They're speaking about Krishna. So he, in the same way, as the word banamali actually refers to Krishna. So in the same way, the yogi doesn't mean a general yogi, but it means the master of yoga maya, the master of the agatana gatana patiyasi shakti, the potency uh, to make the impossible possible and the possible impossible. Yoga maya can do anything. She is the lila shakti and she manages all the various pastimes of Krishna. She has many forms such as Subhadra or Ekanamsa or Brinda Devi, an original form in Vrindavan, or Katayani, of course, and original form in Vrindavan, Pranamasi Yogamaya. So, Krishna, you are yogi, that means you are the master of Yogamaya. Please tell me how I can think of you and remember you. So, finally, we come to text 18. This is the, the last of the, the seven verses spoken by Arjun in response to hearing Chatusloki Gita. And then in the next verses, Sri Krishna will continue. Now, Krishna has already spoken in some detail about his opulences here in chapter 10 and, of course, earlier in chapter 7. But Arjun wants Krishna to speak again and expand upon it. What is the significance of this? So, Arjun will explain in this verse. Vistarinatmano yogam vibhutim chajanardana vuya kataya tripti shrinvato nasti memritam. Very beautiful, beautiful. Krishna is saying, sorry, Arjun is saying to Krishna, O oh, Janardan, Please tell me again in detail. Vistarina means expand. Tell me again in detail about your qualities and your vibhutis, your opulences. Why? Because hearing your nectar, I have no satiation. Bhuya kati atripti hi. Srimbato na asti. There's no tripti. I feel no satisfaction. That means that <laughs> I'm feeling great joy, but this I cannot be satiated. Why? Nasti memritam, because this is amrita. This is nectar. So here we mentioned before each name that Krishna uses for Arjuna and Arjuna uses for Krishna has a great significance. So there's a, this is a very sweet point. Here, Arjun is calling Krishna Janardana. So the word uh, Jana means people, and Ardana means some suffering. So Janardana means that person from whom distressed people seek relief. <laughs> so he's Janardana, he's the one who, if you are distressed, you call out to Krishna. And he will give you relief from that distress. So he is Janardan. So what is the distress that Arjun is experiencing here? The distress is this. That I have been listening to your instructions, Krishna. And they are Amrita. Very delicious, sweet nectar. And now you have stopped speaking and I am speaking. But as I have stopped listening to you now, I am feeling a great distress. I am imbued with an intense greed. My ears are thirsty. And that uh, thirst is so intense, it is giving me distress. So please explain more to me. It is in this sweet way that Arjun is addressing uh, Krishna as Janardana. So Arjun here, 
He is the uh, paradigmatical individual for us. How we should hear Harry Qatar? Ideally, one should hear with the great uh, greed. Uh, Sri Rupa Goswami Vahadi gives the example, just like a, a young man, it's his wedding day. He's never seen his bride before. And on his wedding day, she comes with face uh, covered and then she has to remove the veil and he sees her for the first time. And then afterwards, they're alone together and she's very shyly speaking to him. And as that new bridegroom is listening to every word and every word is so uh, relishable and he's full of such eagerness. Or oh, in that way, may I listen to the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So, here Arjun is saying, Oh Krishna, I never tire of your amrita, your nectar. So, the reason why Krishna Kata is nectar is because it is Bhagavan's own swarup. Perhaps you know, um, there is a definition of Bhagavan. Srila Vyasadeva's father, Parasura Rishi, in the Vishnu Purana, there he is given the famous definition of Bhagavan, of God. Aisvarya Syasamagrasya, Virya Syasasasriya, Gyanabharagya Chaiva, Sanam Bhagan, Bhaga Itingana. That Supreme Personality of God is that person who has all uh, Aishwarya. That means uh, the, he has all the cities, yoga cities, mystic powers. Viryasya, he has all Shakti, he is omnipotent. Yashasa, he is all famous. And by fame, here fame means that when you hear his fame, you become purified. It is, here Yash means Mangal mind. But anyone who hears about him, then his fame makes their life auspicious. So yes, it's a Sri, and Sri means a beauty and a wealth. And Gyan, knowledge and Vairagya, uh, detachment, the person who possesses all of these six qualities in full is known as Bhagavan. So, uh, just as uh, Bhagavan possesses all these six qualities, so similarly, Harikatha, the discussions of Krishna, discussions about Krishna, all the words spoken by Krishna himself, they are non-different from him, and therefore they are also endowed with the six qualities of unlimited um, Aishwarya, Virya, Yashri, Jnana, Vairagya. Hmm? So, uh, very famously, the uh, gopis of Vrindavan, have glorified the Amrita. We're discussing this because here Arjuna is saying, Oh Krishna, I am never satiated by your Amrita, referring to the nectar of Krishna's words. So in regard to the nectar of Krishna's words, uh, Braj Gopis said, when Sri Krishna disappeared from the Rasalila, Oh Krishna, your kata, that means your words, and tava kata, the words about you, are amrita, nectar. Tapta jivanam, they give life to those who are suffering. Kavibir ivitam, they are uh, chanted and spoken. They are recited by kavi, very learned poetic persons. Kalma sharapasaham, and they take away all the difficulties in life, all calamity. Shavana Mangalam, hearing your Amrita, 
is uh, this those auspiciousness. Sri Madhatatan and Yokata is Sri Madhatatan means the the power of Yokata is spreading everywhere. Of course, from the point of view of the Gopis, it can mean Sri beauty, mud. Uh, our own beauty made us become mad. <laughs> Sri mad made us become maddened. And being Sri mad, intoxicated with our own beauty, we uh, came here to serve you. But now you have abandoned us and our life is ruined. Because Sri mad, we became so intoxicated with our own beauty that we neglected the words of our in laws. Our husbands, our family members who tried to stop us from leaving the home, we neglected them and we came here and now we have lost everything. And Atatam, Atatam means spread everywhere. Look at Krishna, on the bank of Jamuna here there are thousands and thousands of us. We are all the evidence of the effect of your listening to your words. So, uh, Srimad Atatam. But the, in a, that is the Ninda mm. the, the meaning, of, if you take the verse as a criticism, the gopis are lovingly criticizing Krishna. But the Stuti Paksh, that is a glorifying Harigata, the meaning Srimadatatam, means that the, the guitar itself is full of power and it bestows spiritual power and Sri and spiritual beauty upon those who hear it. So, here, we're discussing, as Arjun is saying, that Krishna's words are Amrita. So here, Tava Katamrita, Amrita means Moksha, uh, moksha Datitvam. Amrita, Nekta means Moksha Datitvam. The Harikata is Nekta, it makes you immortal, but you only become immortal if you are liberated. So it is the Moksha Datitvam, Harikata liberates you, and it is a Paramananda Rupam. It is the embodiment of the highest bliss. Tapta Jivanam. Harikata, it's Jivanam. It gives life, Tapta, to those who are suffering. So it does Tapanash, the destruction of suffering. So what can really destroy suffering? Jnana, when you have knowledge that you are not this body and you are above the dualities of this world. And when you have vairagya, these two jnana and vairagya come together. You cannot have jnana without vairagya and vairagya without jnana. But you can have jnana and vairagya both simply by having bhakti. So here, tavakatam ritam tapta jivanam. Tapta jivanam indicates that harikata being non-different from Krishna Swarup is Bhagavan himself and it is filled with jnana and vairagya, and that is why Harikata uh, awakens all knowledge and all detachment and puts out the fire of material existence. Baba Mahada Vagni Nirvapanam. Then, Kalmasha Paham. That means that hearing Harikata removes all pop, sinful reactions. So, uh, that is, uh, indicates. Uh, extreme uh, Aishwarya. So Kalma Shapaham uh, indicates the qualities of Bhag Bhagavan's qualities of Aishwarya and Virya. Shakti and having mystic power. So then Shravana Mangalam, listening to Harikata, the gopis are saying, makes your life auspicious. Srimad Atatam. So that means that just as Bhagavad Surup, Krishna's form, has full yasha, full fame. So similarly, the nectar of Krishna Kata being non-different from Bhagavad Srup, Krishna's form, has all yash. And then Sri Madhatatam, that means Sri, just as Krishna has all wealth and all beauty, so similarly Harikata is full of all wealth and beauty being non-different from Krishna Srup and bestows all wealth and all beauty on those who hear Harikata. Therefore, Bhuvi Grinantiye Bhuri Dajana, those persons who uh, give this Harikata to others in this world, then Burida, Burida, they are the most prolific, they are the most um, excessively generous 
uh, donors. They are the uh, uh, tr true benefactors of the whole world. So now, in this verse, Arjun is saying, Frimbato nasti meimritam. I cannot be satiated by hearing this nectar, indicating his intense greed to listen to the pastimes of Sri Krishna. Um, and mainly we see in the translations, I we find the translation, I am, cannot be satiated by the nectar of your words. Now, the, here in the Sanskrit, it just says by nectar. It doesn't say by the nectar of your words. It just says by nectar. So this is one type of um, poetic device, an alankar, actually. Uh, an alankar means a literary embellishment, an ornament or figure of speech. So there are many, many different types of alankars. You can learn about them in alankar shastra, like alankar kostuba, and sitadap, and kavya prakash, dhanya lok, and, and so many kavya shastras. So there's one type of um, alankar, literary embellishment, uh, which is called atishayokti. So atishay means excessive, and ukti means a statement. So it's an excessive statement, and uh, or hyperbole, an exaggeration. So an atishayokti uh, can take so many different forms. So there's one form of atish atishayokti in which... Uh, some a term is missing. There's and the the that which is missing is the um, upameya. If you compare things in poetry, you have upameya that is the subject of comparison, and the upaman that which with which it's compared. For example, you could say, "Oh, your face is like a lotus." So the face is the subject of comparison. And your face is like what? It's like a lotus. So that is the um, object which, with which the subject is being compared. So in the literary embellishment of Atishayokti, then the, the speaker misses out the actual subject that he's talking about and just says what it's compared with. So here we see that Arjun wants to say that, Oh Krishna, your words... Are like nectar, but the, the subject he's speaking about are Krishna's words, and the, and the object of comparison is the nectar. But he misses the subject out completely and just says, "I can never feel fully satiated by your nectar." Hmm? So this is an example of atishayukti. It's a hyperbole. It's an extreme statement, and it means that uh, the. It's emphasizing how nectarian uh, the words of Krishna really are. And, and you'll find this poetic embellishment uh, throughout uh, Vaishnav poetry, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. So I'll, I'll give one small example from, uh, from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 33. There in text 24, Shukadev Goswami is saying, Tatascha Krishna Pavanejala Astala Prasuna Gandani Lajusta Diktate Chachara Bringa Pramadagana Brito Yatamata Chut Dijada Chare Nubi. So Shukadev Goswami is describing after the Rasalila and beautiful pastimes in the Nikunjas, Krishna is seeing that Radharani has become tired. And he's thinking, oh, perhaps we should. We, if we went to the Jamuna and we play in the water, Radharani and all the gopis will be refreshed. So he's describing how Radha, Krishna and gopis, they have their beautiful jalbi playing in the water. And then afterwards, when they come out from the water, he's saying that Sri Krishna strolled through a small forest on the bank of Jamuna. And there were beautiful breezes blowing there, carrying the fragrance of the flowers which were such as the lotuses in the Jamuna and the land lotuses and other flowers growing on the vines and trees of Vrindavan. And Sri Krishna was followed here by the uh, bringing of Pramadagana. He was followed by his beloveds and also by bumblebees. And uh, 
Sri Krishna appeared to be like an intoxicated king of elephants. So, here, this is another example of the Atishayukti, where Krishna and Radhika and the, the uh, Nayikas, the Sakis, are being followed by bees. So, here, bees is comparison. The actual subject matter, which uh, the word has been omitted, is the Manjuris. The Manjuris, Rupa Manjuri, Rati Manjuri, Labanga Manjuri, Rasa Manjuri, Guna Manjuri, Kamala Manjuri, the main servants of Radharani, uh, they are being compared to bees. But they are so much like bees that they, their name uh, has been omitted completely and only bees has been mentioned. Uh, because bees are very eager to drink the nectar of the lotus and uh, they become intoxicated by that. And also, when they, they're intoxicated, they're also, mm, they're also humming. So in the same way, as the Manjuris are doing Harinam Sankirtan with great joy, just as bees hum with joy, the Manjuris are singing the glories of the beauty of the divine couple Radha and Krishna and falling behind them. Uh, but they're not mentioned. Only bees are mentioned. Why? Akishayoti Alankar. So, in the same way, we find here, Arjun is saying that, O oh Krishna, Bhuya Katiya Tritihi, Sirnvatonastime Mritam, again tell me about your qualities and opulences, because uh, the more I hear, the more I want to relish the nectar of your words, because I, I cannot be satisfied by this uh, nectar of yours, this Amrita. So words are not directly said, only Amrit is given, this is Atishayokti Alankar. So we see that the poetry of Bhagavad Gita is exquisitely beautiful. And now Arjun has requested, O oh Janardhan, I'm calling out to you because you are the one to whom distressed persons like me, I'm feeling the distress of the extreme thirst of my ears to hear the nectar of your words. Uh, now Arjun is expressing in this way, in the next verse, Krishna will then fill the ears of Arjun with the nectar that he has requested and uh, that we'll hear about next week. So please join us for the uh, next installment of uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter 10 next week. Also just now we have uh, Ishtagosti questions and answers with, uh, in English. There will be live streams with um, Italian and Spanish and Russian translations. Uh, you can join. And uh, then tomorrow, uh, at the same time, we'll be celebrating the uh, Guru Purnima, the birthday of Srila Vyasadeva. And it also coincides with our class, our series on Guru Tattva. So we'll combine the both together. And it also coincides with the disappearance day of Srila Sanatan Goswami, who is the Acharya of Sambandha Gyan and represents the um, Diksha Guru for everyone. And uh, so we'll be celebrating all those festivals tomorrow. And then after that, there'll be an uh, Ishta Gosti in uh, Spanish. And you can join in the other language streams, but the mainstream will be in Spanish. And then after that, there'll be a Russian Ishta Gosti also. So we have uh, three more programs coming up over the weekend. Also like to remind you, Retrograde Mercury is going on. There's also a big eclipse tomorrow. So if you're in the modes then your mind will become extremely unsteady and you'll tend to get in conflicts with people and everything. So don't be in the modes. Chant the holy name. Taste the brain. And if anyone criticizes you, just take the blame and chant the name and taste the brain and be happy with your life. Hare Krishna. Sila Gurudev Ki Jai. Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Holi Vrindavan Lala Ki Jai. Varsani Wali Ki Jai. Jai Jai Sri. Radhe Shyam, Oh, Premanandhi, Hari.